women have great authority in the spirit. Women play a massive role in the spiritual battle between good and evil, between light and darkness. Think of Yael, who, as we're told in the book of Judges, put an end to the wicked commander, Sisera. The Most High God made both man and woman in his own image. Both man and woman are needed to express who God is. Both are needed to most fully demonstrate the glory of God. Both are needed to destroy the darkness and advance the light. Out of pure self-protection, it's in the enemy's interests to subvert, degrade and destroy the power of women. But clumsy, one-dimensional lies won't work. Women are made in the image of God, and so are too intelligent to be easily deceived. So the enemy has to persuade the woman to achieve her God-given glory by corrupt means. Hence the serpent's tactics with Eve. It appealed to her God-given desire to be like a God. Effectively, it appealed to truth. Then it persuaded her to achieve this her own way, rather than God's way. Spiritual power, strength and authority are unleashed in and through women who flow in their natural, God-given ways. The enemy has to detach women from these God-given ways in order to escape from the ferocious effectiveness of the woman's spiritual fight. So the key to the woman's strength, her power and her victory over the darkness is submission. She stays resolutely on God's path. She operates in and under the guidance and authority of God himself. She is not God and thus must rank herself under God. This is submission. Heaven has a hierarchy. The mighty angels submit to God, hence their awesome power and guaranteed successes. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, submits himself to God the Father, hence his unrivaled authority as King of kings and Lord of all lords. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven, this heavenly order, this condition of submission extends to wives and their husbands. The wife is commanded to strategically rank herself below her husband. The Bible uses military language to show that this is a strategic submission rather than a qualitative one. The woman is no less important, no less valuable. But her strength and authority is unleashed through submission. A woman's husband ranks over her like an officer ranks over a captain. To achieve victory, the captain is needed just as much as the officer who ranks above him. The head of the woman is the man. The head of the man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. Your head isn't more important than the rest of your body, but it's largely your head that directs what your body does, or at least... It's your head that filters and ultimately governs what your body does. We're in the last of these last days. The darkness is going all out in a last ditch attempt to defeat the light. It will fail in this attempt, but meanwhile the battle is real and ferocious. If we want to win at every turn, it's time for the power of women in the church to be truly unleashed. This has nothing to do with the church awkwardly trying to manoeuvre women into positions of authority in a poorly veiled attempt to copy the bizarre efforts of the world to mimic equality. It has everything to do with returning to the state of nature, how God made us to be and how he made us to operate. Symbolism is an impressive and highly influential means of communicating. It's immensely helpful and enjoyable in both concealing and revealing the wonders and glory of God and of his ways. Both the Bible and nature tell us that if a woman has long hair, it's her glory. Why? Her long hair is a symbol. It's symbolic of the state of nature. 
This is why her long hair is so glorious and so feminine. It speaks of nature, of the way things were made. And the Bible is clear that her long hair speaks of both true submission and the power that this unleashes. Such submission attracts the favour of God and unleashes the power that he has invested in the woman. This great power isn't to be exercised independently of the hierarchy of heaven. Independent exercise of such power turns it against itself. Submitted exercise of such power puts devils to flight. Yael, wife of Heber, was at home. Cicera, commander of the armies of the cruel king Yabin, came seeking refuge and sustenance. Yael welcomed him in and then put him to death. Later, the prophetess and judge Deborah and the military commander Barak celebrated in song with these words. When locks are long in Israel, when the people offer themselves willingly, bless the Lord. Judges chapter 5 verse 2. A woman, Yael, had just put an end to wickedness and evil. She exercised great power and authority because she flowed in the authority of the Lord. She ranked herself properly, so his favour was upon her. Her husband, Heber, had conducted himself wisely and built trust with the cruel king, Yabin. Yael had worked with her husband in this, which gave her now the opportunity to seize the moment and build on that work, bringing an end to the darkness. Her submissive exercise of power and authority then inspired all the people to press against the enemy until the darkness had been eradicated completely. Yael was a powerful woman in a relationship of true submission to the Lord and her husband. She was glorious. Hence the song. If a woman has long hair, if her locks are long, it is her glory. It represents that submission and the power that it unleashes. And given that the natural creation not only symbolises spiritual realities, but also plays a central role in advancing them, her long hair is not only a symbol, but also in itself a true spiritual weapon. When locks are long in Israel, when the people offer themselves willingly to God, the Lord is blessed. And when the Lord is blessed, humanity is blessed. And God's glory is seen. The same biblical passage that speaks of the glory of long hair on a wife also says that long hair on a man is a shame for him. This doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Bear in mind that men who took the Nazarite vow, a special vow of devotion to God, promised never to cut their hair. This set them apart from other people, made them stand out because they looked and acted differently. Being different can be seen as a reason for shame. Shame in the eyes of some people but glory in the eyes of God. The Nazarites' submission to God unleashed great power in their lives. Samson was a Nazarite, and his great strength came from his long hair. Strength for the men, glory for the women, and long hair symbolising and even enabling it all. Yes, the enemy has succeeded in mocking the power of women by misrepresenting where it comes from. Let's get back to the state of nature. Joyfully let the locks be long and watch the day dawn and the darkness flee.